Good Wednesday to you. Hope you're doing fine and it's a wonderful day if it can be right. That would be great. Um, and we'll see what the weather brings. I'm surprised it didn't bring anything, but we're, we're doing, we're, we're looking at the weekend um, maybe being a little bit more again. But, but anyhow, hope you're safe. Hope things are going well for you and your families. And uh, may God's grace rest upon all of us. What I decided to do today is kind of follow up on yesterday's um, uh, YouTube that I took from the Gather magazine, the Women's Bible Study, and I thought I'm going to go into it just a little bit more. One of the questions that was um, asked yesterday, think about a time when you d disobeyed your parents, teachers, spouse, or other powerful figures or institutions in your life. What moved you to that disobedience? And, you know, I think all of us can remember as teenagers, we didn't feel our parents were treating us right, right? And, and as I said yesterday, some of you may be dealing with a spouse that's been very abusive or is very abusive to you in one way or another. And sometimes we don't agree with teachers either. Sometimes as students, sometimes the parents don't agree with the teachers either. I know when I was um, in school, the old, olden days, it's not even the olden days anymore, but, but we uh, um, respected the teacher and the teacher was, was always right. Some, for some parents that wasn't true, but for my parents it sure was. And so if I got in trouble at school, they usually got contacted and I got tr in trouble at home. And I knew that the teacher was right, no matter what my feelings were about. But what happens when we um, disagree, when we are moved to disobey and not do what is told? The um, two uh, midwives at the time of the Pharaoh that wanted all the baby boys killed, Perpetua and Felicity, they didn't follow through. They feared God, the God that we worship, and they knew that it wasn't right to kill any babies. And so this is what um, this was what comes after that, and. It, this section is uh, entitled Divine Obedience, and I, that's the, what I'm going to be naming. That's what I named this YouTube segment. And from Exodus 1, starting at verse 18, we read, So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. And so God dwelt um, with, well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, God gave them families. Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but let's see, no, let's see. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. From then, Pharaoh commanded all his people that every boy that is born to the Hebrews, you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. And we know from the reading of yesterday that the reason why the girls were allowed to live is that they can be playthings play things for the people in power. And this is the, the commentary that's written. Pharaoh eventually catches on to the fact that the Hebrew baby boys are still very much alive. He summons Shipra and Puha to account for this development. I'm sorry, it was Shipra and Puha, not Felicity and Perpetua. I got myself into a different segment there. But anyhow, Shipra and Pua, to account for this development, surely perplexed that his order could have been disobeyed. Instead of giving in to the Pharaoh's next power play, the midwives doubled down on their defiance by telling him an outright lie. 
They pretend that the Hebrew women have been popping out babies so quickly that all these births have taken place before the midwives even show up. It's a lie that only works to fool someone who knows nothing about giving birth to a child. Biblical scholar Wilda Gaffney observes that the midwives also cleverly exploit Pharaoh's built-in cultural bias. In her book, Womenist Midrash, a reintroduction to the women of the Torah and the throne, Gaffney translates the word of the midwives in verse 19 this way. The Hebrew women are brutish, animalistic, not refined like the re Egyptian women. Their babies just plop out of them. Gaffney ar argues that because Pharaoh sees the Hebrew women as inferior to the Egyptians, he is easily deceived by the obvious line of the midwives. God looks kindly upon Shipra and Pua, rewarding them for their courage and faithfulness. Meanwhile, the Hebrew people continue to multiply and grow strong, but so does Pharaoh's cruelty. Talk about double down, right? All Egyptians are summoned to participate in the genocide setting the stage for the birth of Moses. Eventually, the Israelites escape from slavery and from Egypt, and Gaffney writes this, The liberation of the Israelite people in Egypt begins with Shipra and Pua. They are the mothers of a revolution waged by women. They likely enlisted untold numbers of birthing women and expected mothers in their resistance move and expectant mothers in their resistant movement. Their act of resistance sets the stage for those to follow. Shipra and Pua become the first deliverers in the book of deliverance. And so ends ends Gaffney's comment on this. As we consider all the things that have gone on through the generations we realize that God works in ways that are sometimes, well, people who believe in God will go more for what God believes and understand that God desires good, God desires life, God desires us to do justice, love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. With that, I'm going to cut it and um, get into our prayers and pray the prayer that I prayed yesterday to begin with, and then we go into the things we're dealing with. Let us pray. God of strength and purpose, give us power to defy the forces of evil that seek to harm your children. Thank you for the courage of these women who have inspired us by their example and taught us to be both brave and bold. Be with us now as we follow in their path. Help us to follow the one whom you sent to teach us what just love looks like, our Savior Jesus Christ. And Lord God, as we're dealing with, continue to deal with the coronavirus and all the stuff that's going on with it, we pray that you continue, we can continue to look at you as our peace and strength. We pray for our national leaders. We pray that they can come up with a way that can help people to be able to at least to find food for their children and shelter. We look at those as primary and daily bread. We pray that you will give them the insight and wisdom and the need to serve your people as best as possible. And we pray for all the nations of the world as we face together all of the uncertainties around the coronavirus. Protect those who are very vulnerable among us. We pray that you be with those who are currently ill, in isolation, and all those who are sick with other things that are going on with them. We pray that you will protect us all. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to our health care workers, especially as their work in caring for others puts them at great risk. Guide us as we consider how best to prepare and respond in our families, 
in our Savior's Lutheran Church, in the places where we work, in the places where we shop, in our Huron community. Give courage to face those days with, without, not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service. And again, Lord, we know that we need the schools, we need the teachers, we need the administration. You are the wisest of all teachers. We give you thanks for the gift of reason, the opportunity of education. Bless the school districts. May they be places of safety and learning. And we pray that you will give us your insight and wisdom to come up with safe ways to educate. Give us wisdom, patience, kindness, love, faith, and hope as everybody is wrestling with the hard issues that present themselves in these challenging times. We give you thanks for all that are involved with the school district, all the way from the administrators to the support staff, all connected with the district. We entrust these dedicated individuals to your care, knowing you will provide as you see need. We, lift, we pray for our parents and students as their hearts are anxious. Care for them, shepherding God. Calm all fears, ease the burdens. Give everyone good courage as they have calm hearts and minds to deal with what is ahead. All these and anything else you see we need, please grant us through the prayer your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's peace, hope, love, grace surround you at this time, and we'll Hopefully see you tomorrow. Bye.